It was reported today that the Trump administration will be revoking Obama-era legal guidelines in which the federal government encourages college to use race as a factor in admissions as if they needed encouragement. If that's the case, it will be a long-awaited blow in favor of equality and civil rights and standards in American life. In more and more parts of our life in this country, critical decisions are being made simply on people's appearance, on their race or gender, instead of on actual measures of achievement or merit. And that's terrifying. Obviously, one of the places where merit is most critical is in medicine. We trust physicians to make life or death decisions they do every day. Competence is critical there, obviously. But medical schools don't see it that way. When applying to medical school, two critical factors are an applicant's GPA and the score on the medical college admissions test, the MCAT. It goes without saying the prospective doctor ought to have excellent grades and a high MCAT score. You'd want that for your doctor. But the standards is not the same for everybody. It differs by appearance. For example, applicants with an MCAT of 27 to 29 and a GPA of 3.4 to 3.59 if you have those numbers and you're Asian, you have a 21% chance of getting into a medical school. If you're white, you have a 29% chance of getting in with those numbers. But if you're Hispanic, you have a 60% chance of getting in. African-American applicants had an 81% acceptance rate with those numbers. In other words, with identical scores, an African-American applicant was four times as likely to be admitted as an Asian purely because of appearance. V.J. Chokal Ingham knows more than most people about the dark underbelly of medical school admissions. He is of Indian heritage, but he wanted to go to medical school. So he shaved his head and started going by his middle name, which is Jojo. He presented himself as African-American. He says it made all the difference and got him into medical school. He has written a book on this experience. It's called Almost Black. We spoke to him recently. Here's part of the conversation. V.J., thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight. So you are convinced, based on your experience, that your race or what the medical school perceived your race to be was critical in getting in? So uh, exactly like you mentioned, I reviewed the statistical data published by the American Association of Medical Colleges. I figured out that I was much more likely to get into admission as an an African-American that's an Asian-American. So I came up with that scam that you described earlier. I managed to get into Washington University, and, I'm sorry, get waitlisted at Washington University and the University of Pennsylvania, which are the third and fourth best medical schools in the country at the time. And I managed to get into St. Louis University School of Medicine, despite the fact that my 3.1 GPA was dramatically lower than their average of 3.7. So my plan paid off much more than I expected. What does it say about the people who run medical schools that they'd be willing to lower standards for physicians, many of whom, you know, wield scalpels for a living, cut people open, in the name of some abstract diversity goal? That seems reckless. Um, so as a result of this system, um, they essentially allow students who are not as qualified as others to get in. Now, I don't want to talk about the end product, whether uh, this results in physicians who are of lower quality, but I will say that it is a system of legalized racism. The universities are promoting, and medical schools are promoting, discrimination against Asian Americans on a massive scale. And uh, it also promotes negative stereotypes about the competency and professionalism of African American physicians and That's right. uh, healthcare professionals. Um, you know, it's important to realize that uh, there was a University of, of uh, Illinois Urbana Chapin Shuddy, which showed that affirmative action actually promoted negative stereotypes about. Uh, African Americans and Hispanic students. It, so that is, is a very there some real reason? Oh, of course it is. Is there some reason that we should care about what our doctors look like? Is appearance critical to practicing medicine? So, first of all, I never graduated medical school, so I can't say that is. But ultimately, um, we want to live in a society where you judge someone based on merit. Uh, your race should not be relevant to your ability to practice medicine or anything effectively. Uh, that's not the type of society which we want to promote, necessarily. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm sure you've taken criticism for this. 
I think you're a hero for doing it, and I would love to hear your critics explain exactly what you did wrong, because they can't. Thank you for joining us tonight. I appreciate it.